Well, hello and welcome to our online Good Friday gathering and service. For thousands of years, the church has gathered on Good Friday to take time to remember, to remember the betrayal, to remember the arrest, the torture, and death of Jesus Christ. The apostolic constitutions called Good Friday a day of mourning, not a day of festive joy. And yet, as Christians, we know that we do not mourn as those without hope, but we mourn because it was for our sin that Jesus Christ took upon himself the, uh, the death or his death on the cross. Good Friday takes place between Palm Sunday, where we celebrate his triumphal entry into Jerusalem as king, and Resurrection Sunday, where we celebrate Jesus Christ, our king's victory over death. And yet, between these days of celebration, we gather in many ways to mourn, to lament, to remember that the triumph of the king over sin, over Satan, required the king of kings to wear a crown of thorns and to be mocked instead of praised and nailed to a criminal's cross. So on Good Friday, we worship God, the triune God, the, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, our great God and Father, according to his wisdom and because of his love, he ordained a plan of redemption, the only plan for redemption. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, accomplished salvation through his suffering and his resurrection. And God the Holy Spirit applies the work of salvation to all called and all who believe and receive. So we look at the events leading up to the crucifixion and Jesus' ultimate suffering and death, and we are filled with wonder at what a Savior we have in Jesus Christ. The cross should bring us to the collision of seemingly contradictory places. For at the cross, we see the collision of purity and depravity, of mercy and judgment, of sorrow and thanksgiving, and on and on. On Good Friday, we remember that he who hung the earth upon the waters was hung upon the cross. And the Bible tells me of God's great act and action of sacrificial love, where he allows his one and only son, Jesus, to be the sacrifice for you and for me to take our sins upon himself on the cross. And so Good Friday has a direct connection with me and with you. An act of intense cruelty equals the ultimate in love. Um, many of you will be familiar with the, the singer Bono. He's the lead singer of the popular rock band U2. And he was quoted one time as saying, I love the idea of the sacrificial lamb. I love the idea that God says, let's face it, you are not living a very good life, are you? And there's consequences to actions. That's why Christians call the day we commemorate Jesus' death as Good Friday. I want to read for you a, a short story about a lost sailboat and about a father and son. And so a father and son were working for months to build a toy sailboat. And every night when the man came home from work, he and his boy would disappear in the garage for hours. It was a labor of love love for each other and for the thing that they were creating. The wooden hull was painted bright red and it was trimmed with gleaming white sails. When it was finished, they traveled to a nearby lake for the boat's 
uh, maiden voyage, the first trial run. And before launching it, the father tied a string to its stern to keep it from sailing away too far. The boat performed beautifully. But before long, a motorboat crossing the lake accidentally cut the string and the sailboat drifted out of sight on the large lake. Attempts to find it were fruitless and both father and son were devastated at the loss. A few weeks later, as the boy was walking home from school, he passed his favorite toy store and he was amazed to see a toy, a toy sailboat in the window. It was his sailboat. He ran inside to claim the boat, telling the storekeeper about his experience on the lake. The store owner explained that he had found the boat while on a fishing trip. You, you may be its maker, he said, but as a finder, I am its legal owner. You may have it back for $50. The boy was stunned as you know, for how much it was going to cost to regain the boat. But since it was precious to him, he quickly went about trying to find odd jobs and earn enough money to buy it back. Well, months of that hard work uh, finally came the day where he joyfully walked into the toy store and he handed the owner the $50 in exchange for his sailboat. It was the happiest day of his life. And as he left the store, he held the boat up to the sunlight. Its colors gleamed as though newly painted. I made you, but I lost you, he said. And now at great sacrifice, I have bought you back. That makes you twice mine. And twice mine is mine forever. On Good Friday, God says to you and to me, I made you, but I lost you. And now at great sacrifice, I have bought you back. That makes you twice mine, and twice mine is mine forever. God has made us, and on the cross, he bought us back. As you listen or read once again the Good Friday story, do you hear what did not happen? It becomes clear from scripture that Jesus did not go down in defeat. He died, but the scripture doesn't portray his death as a last failing breath of a beaten man. If there was, if there was a death with dignity, it's here that we see it. Luke, who was a doctor, described Jesus as laying down his life. It was not taken from him. He went through the, the pangs and the torment and was still alive. We also see that Jesus did not abandon his trust in his heavenly Father. Having been left in the darkness of God's judgment, he could still look up to heaven and say, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Does that surprise you? When we go through our darkest hours, are we not inclined sometimes to doubt the love and care of a heavenly father? How could Jesus still want to place himself in the father's hands? It's clear from scripture that darkness did not win on that horrible Friday afternoon. It held sway for three hours, and then it went back to its place. I heard that the old English word for good is holy. So it could be described today as Holy Friday. I want to read for you some scriptures for our meditation today. And then we're going to have a time of communion. This is from Psalm 22, verses 1 to 11. And Jesus on the cross quotes part of this text. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me, they wag their heads. He who trusts in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breasts. On you I was cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Isaiah chapter 53 talking about the suffering servant to come from verses 3 through 10. It says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, and like a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence. And yet there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief, and when his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. One more scripture today to consider is John's Gospel, the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 16. It says, Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? 
But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at the, a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover, and it was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. And they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus. Back to Isaiah's suffering servant passage where it says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. And the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. You know, ashes are a clear picture for us of the frailty of human existence. And though many times we may somehow think, you know, we are invincible in this life or even led to believe that we are in no way in need of a savior. When we are hit with life's struggles or face to face with life's painful events, some of us quickly remember that we need help, that we needed a savior. And we have one who is also broken in ways that we can never fully comprehend. And yet he remains strong and chose to, en to endure it all for you and for me. And his grace, he extends grace to remind us that we don't have to stay stuck in our struggle and pain. He holds good in store through it all, able to bring greater purpose, greater beauty, greater strength. He never intends for us to remain in the pit of our despair for he breathes fresh life. God brought beauty out of the brokenness of the cross. He gives beauty for our ashes. His sacrifice offers forgiveness for our sin. And the power of the resurrection that we'll be celebrating on Sunday gives hope for our future. There's such power there. God sending his one and only son, he loved, he gave. And there was no other way but this. So as we enter now into this weekend, may we take a closer look at the reality of it all, the suffering of the cross, the huge sacrifice that Christ paid, the pain that was endured, the the great cost of his gift, the love that was shown, the freedom that he offers. It's not a flowery picture of, you know, fluff and stuff, but it is the most powerful of stories that has ever been told. Incredible sacrifice, amazing grace, lavish love. Use this Good Friday prayer to focus on what Jesus has done for you before we have a time of communion together. Dear Lord, we remember 
today. We remember the pain and the suffering of the cross and all that Jesus was willing to endure so that we could be set free. Paying the price, that great sacrifice, to offer each one of us the gift of eternal life. Lord, help us to never take for granted this huge gift of love on our behalf. Help us to be reminded often the cost of it all. Forgive us when we've been too busy or distracted by other things and not fully recognizing what you freely have given and what you have freely done for us. Thank you, Lord, that by your wounds, we are healed. Thank you that because of your huge sacrifice, we can live free. And thank you that sin and death have been conquered and that your power is everlasting. Thank you that we can say with great hope, it is finished. For we know what's still to come. Death has lost its sting. And we praise you for you are making all things new. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Let's take a moment before we close our time together today to together remember the table of the Lord. Remember the price that was paid to reflect on Christ's great sacrifice for us and to participate in what he asks us to participate in. Remembering, calling to mind these things and then going and living differently. And so, as we remember that night before Jesus was betrayed, he took bread at common meal and he broke it, giving thanks for it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body. And so as we reflect on Jesus' great sacrifice, we remember today his broken body, broken for our healing, broken so that we could be redeemed. And likewise, that same evening, Jesus taking a, a common cup, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. And whenever you drink of it, you're remembering my blood that was shed on the cross. And so today, as we drink of the cup, we're reminded again that Jesus made all things new. And because of his death, on the cross, his blood that was shed, we were bought back and brought back into relationship by faith in Jesus Christ. He is still the way, the truth, and the life, and we come to the Father through him. And so we drink of the cup, remembering the blood of Jesus paid for our sin. May you go in peace today. May in the quietness and the contemplation of this Good Friday, may you call to mind just how good it was. Such a terrible moment in human history, but how great our salvation that was paid on the cross of Calvary. Be blessed. Go in peace.
Thank you.